Today on North02, we are going to be talking about giant ground sloths. They were a very diverse group with many unique members. Some of these members were the size of elephants, and others were even semi-aquatic. Before we talk about how unique these animals were, let's talk about their evolution. 59 million years ago, in the early Paleocene, the group Xenarthra emerged. Xenarthra is a suborder of placental mammals found only in the Americas. They diversified and evolved extensively in South America during its long isolation. South America was an island for most of the Cenozoic and only relatively recently connected to North America. 23 million years ago in the early Oligocene, Megatheridae diverged. This is a group that encompasses all of the giant sloths. Hapalops was an early genus of giant sloth that diverged in the Miocene. This genus was relatively primitive with a lot of small members. They were only about three feet long and are thought to have been able to climb trees. As the species evolved, many became large, likely as a defense from predators. This is where we get to the giant elephant-sized beasts. Not all species were this large, but Megatherium was. Megatherium was one of the largest land animals known to have existed at four tons. It was 20 feet long, or six meters for you foreigners. It was the largest ground sloth and would have been second only to some species of mammoth in weight at the time. It has a very robust skeleton with a strong pelvic girdle. A very strong tail was also present to support a tripod-like stance. It is thought that it would stand on its hind limbs and balance on the tail while foraging in the treetops. In this stance, it could use its arm to pull down tree branches to feed. It had massive claws. These claws were very, very large and possibly very dangerous. Some have even speculated that Megatherium was a carnivore because of these claws. I think that this idea is ridiculous, but let's hear the argument first. Richard Farina and Ernesto Blanco of the Universidad de la Republica in Montevideo have discovered that Megatherium's olecranon was very short. This is the part of the elbow that the tricep muscles attach to. This adaptation is found in carnivores and optimizes speed rather than strength. They could use their massive arms and robust hand claws to stab with an incredible amount of force. Regardless of whether it was a carnivore or not, these arms were certainly devastating weapons. It is a very interesting discovery, but I don't think this means it was a carnivore at all. I think it is already obvious to you guys that they would have been used either for self-defense from predators or self-defense from members of the same species. Another likely use of these claws was for digging, because we know they did dig huge burrows. It is certainly possible that they could scare off a predator from a kill and indulge in some meat. A lot of people don't know this, but many animals that we typically think of as herbivores will eat meat if given the chance. There are plenty of cases of animals like deer eating baby birds that fell out of their nests. Meat is full of vitamins and nutrients that is not available from the diets of many herbivores. So again, it is very unlikely that Megatherium would purposely kill other animals or go out of its way to scare off predators from a kill, but it is certainly possible. Another very interesting thing about these sloths was that some of them had armor plates in their skin. Buried in the skin of mylodontid ground sloths were small bony discs known as osteoderms. Paramylon is an extinct genus of mylodontid sloths from the Pliocene all the way to the late Pleistocene. One of these species, known as Harlan's ground sloth, had osteoderms the size of nickels. Though nickel size does not sound very large, they are densely packed around its back, shoulders, and neck. This was likely to protect it from animals jumping on its back and causing damage. Ground sloths were mainly quadrupedal, and not all of them were as big as elephants. It wouldn't be hard for a smilodon to hop on top of a big sloth and cause massive damage. These plates would have provided a lot of protection from predators and possibly rival sloths. Another interesting thing about these giants were their burrowing ability. They would dig these burrows with their strong hand claws. Over 1,500 of these burrows have been discovered. One burrow in particular was over 2,000 feet long with multiple branches. Some are over 6 feet tall and 3 feet wide. Another interesting thing about these sloths is that some of them were even semi-aquatic. Thalassosinus is a genus that is thought to have spent their time in water. It sounds kind of far out there, but there is a lot of good evidence to support it. Marine mammals tend to have very strong, heavy bones. This allows them to sink easier in the water and add additional strength to the skeleton. Over time, species of Thalassosinus evolved denser and denser bones until they went extinct. 
This suggests that they are becoming more and more aquatic. Also, a fun thing to note about these sloths is that they could have been food for Megalodon. It is very unlikely, but kind of a hilarious probability. It's kind of unfortunate that they went extinct, because perhaps if they stuck around today, they could have been like modern day manatees. I can't believe how much there was to learn about these animals. I thought this would just be kind of like a boring video, but I didn't realize how interesting they really were. I could cover a lot more about them, but I think I covered it quite well. Anyways, some of them went extinct because of their increased competition after North and South America collided, and the final nail in the coffin was the end Pleistocene mass extinction. This is what killed off everything cool in America like saber cats and mammoths. The ground sloths went with them and now they only live in our imagination. I have also heard people say that ground sloths might still be alive in remote places in the Amazon. I think you guys know my answer to this. Are you kidding me? Like an animal the size of an elephant would survive 10,000 years unheard of in an area where people live. Get real. Yeah, they're definitely not going to find one, so I, I'll double and triple down on this. Anyways, thanks for watching. The channel has been exploding lately, and I couldn't have been more happy and excited to make this channel into something great. Subscribe, check out the subreddit, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of North 2 See ya.